Hey friends, uh, this series that you're about to get, particularly one game in the series, is probably the favorite thing I've cast in the last six months. I you, you hear the roughness of my voice, I scream myself hoarse. Um, it really is. I words cannot. I'm, I'm still at a loss for words. I'm recording this today. The video was recorded yesterday, and I'm still suffering from it. I, I'm at a loss for words. Enjoy it. It's fantastic. But again, before we get into that, I upload one video in 4K every single day of the week here on this channel, mostly StarCraft VODs. If you like that, make sure to go give a subscribe. And if you like what I got here, if you want to say something nice or horrible about me, make sure to leave a comment down below. But also, I stream on Twitch every Monday, EPTNA, every Saturday, EPT Korea, and uh, other stuff as it happens that's a little less regular. So make sure to go check me out, twitch.tv slash Beowulf. But uh, folks, enjoy what is perhaps the best game I've ever seen in this series. Have a good one. In the upper right, in the blue, his name, of course, for Alpha X, the Chintas, Protoss Incarnate. He's classic. His opponent in the bottom left in the red. He is the Micromaster. It's Bjorn. By the way, I would like to point out that my favorite nickname in StarCraft is uh, that John is uh, Bjorn is Micro Jackson. <laughs> well, the, the StarCraft hive mind is brilliant sometimes, also cruel and, and horrible sometimes, but. We're not talking about that. In this case, the uh, <laughs> the StarCraft Hive Mind can be brilliant, and Micro Jackson is fantastic. He's a smooth criminal, waltzing into bases, killing off his opponents. But again, so this is Beyond's birthday here that we're watching. I asked him if he was going to win to pay for his party, and he said, uh, "We'll try," which is Korean, which is Korean pro gamer for, "Yeah, I'm going to dumpster these fools." You know what? <laughs> you know what? There's a. They're often like in, in comedy, you have anger translators. Where someone says, ah, yes, you know, Barack Obama's anger translator. Where you hear what he says diplomatically and you translate what he says. Uh, I think we need like. It's not as bad. Players in general have gotten a lot better at interviewing and saying interesting things and talking smack in a, in a fun way. But certainly during like the, the Wings of Liberty, Heart of the Swarm stage, if it's not MC. I think we needed a Korean anger translator <laughs> or a Korean smack talk translator. So when someone says, I would like to just uh, show good games for my fans and they, they're able to translate it into what it actually means. But classic, he's uh, he's got murder on the mind in this game. This should be a practice Stargate. It's going to be for an Oracle. There we go. Stargate going down beyond. Well, he's going to be able to scout this by intuition. He's going to say, wait a minute, you're missing a pylon and uh you're three out of three on gas both sides i can count the gas and i do not see a tech structure so i know you have a proxy somewhere on the map as this reaper really shouldn't get much more and as this is a widow mine opener anyways we're gonna see widow mines at all sort of dastardly evil spots and uh, that classic may or may not be able to find probe still being here is interesting i wonder if there is going to be a follow-on set of shenanigans i don't know There we go. Zealous dead. Hey, that's that's something. Now, what am I going on the low ground? Did Bjorn scout that? No, he didn't. Okay. Just barely missed. Just barely missed. It's the first Oracle on the way. Not even getting Chrono up. Okay, there it is. I was going to say, it's not even getting Chrono It looks like Classic kind of understands this may not find the value he's looking for. But the answer to that one is no. And actually, do we have any Widow Mines in the main? I think there's only one. Where's the... Ah, where is it? <laughs> okay, there we go. Behind the gas. Got it. You can kind of see it. There it is. It's pretty visible, right? Let's see if the Oracle falls victim. It certainly will be the proper attack path. And also how many Oracles Classic makes because, oh, okay. oh, 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 he's going for a hero build. This is pretty cool. So we're going to see multiple Oracles get made as, uh, there we go, forced to run back home. Not a lot of Marines, actually, but we have to remember, of course, that first of all, you would heal this. Second of all, Marines with healing. Yeah, they can fight this Oracle pretty damn well. Hey, Domo, Domito Robato. Thank you so much for the, not the... Not the follow. Thank you so much for the subscription. Really appreciate it. Prime Gaming. You're awesome. But this build coming in from Classic. 
he is gonna build three oracles maybe even four and he's going to take this opportunity to be aggressive with uh never mind that's a it's only two oracles that's phoenix on the way never mind there is the there is the scout though and actually he's gonna get a phoenix pretty damn quickly but the oracles arrive they do force things back and uh this is a dead medevac that is a lot of dead marines that is un oh beyond is in trouble now two oracles phoenix that's a lot of dps and you add on the, you add on these stalkers as well and all of a sudden Yun luckily has a bunker. This Widow Mine's not going to get much of anything. Classic scouts it out in time. And this this weird committed pressure, well, it's uh, scary. This is not easy for Byun to deal with right now. Now, I, I don't know that it kills him. And we're going to have to see how much Classic decides to commit. Uh, getting three adepts uh, is a really important number, by the way. Three adepts, one shot SCBs. And Marines, for that matter. But it looks like despite the damage that uh, Classic was able to find knocking that medevac down with eight Marines inside, he doesn't feel comfortable enough to really get the pressure on. Not yet. But certainly, Beyond does kind of feel constrained, pinned back into his own base. He's not going to be able to run across the map, punish this third for a while, even or, or punish the fact that there is no blink, right? It, it is. There's not a lot here. This is just a very much a tempo move here. Uh, and now the oracles, they fly in. How many workers are they going to get? It looks like it's going to be a couple. We'll take a count at the end. Uh, one oracle goes down. So ameliorating things just a little bit. But six SCVs have died. At this point, though, it takes three ticks to damage. It, oracles don't really kill things all that quickly. And Beyond is going to be moving into that 733-11 timing. Really the standard one. The one that... You may have heard of before the one that has dominated this meta, dominated this matchup for quite a while now. Cyclone gets the lock on. Phoenix will be able to mostly stay alive. There we go. Cannot maintain a vision. But Classic, he's just waiting. He's waiting to pounce. He's got a couple sentries here. It means he's going to be able to section this army off. He's waiting for Bjorn to move out on the map. He says he's licking his chops. It's a fat, juicy steak. All marbled. We're going to call it a Wagyu. And he's just waiting to see his teeth on it. Just getting the barest sear on the grill before he is able to enjoy it. And the sear looks like it's done. Bjorn getting ready to move out on the map. And this army. Eh. Well, you know what? In all fairness... No, actually, Blink is done. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Classic is looking to jump on top of this force field. Oh, he's going to get so many Marines to start. And there is no siege jump on the tanks. Bjorn is just not micring this appropriately. He's going to be able to save a couple Marines and a second layer of force fields. He's minigun all over again. And the Raven goes down too. The tanks are starting to fall. Classic, he's done it in this game with a most unorthodox play. But it does not matter how orthodox or unorthodox it is. He takes the game. There we go. Classic takes game one. In the bottom right, trying to deny his opponents a wonderful birthday. He is in the blue up one. It's classic. In the upper left, in the red, trying to fund his party for the Shot Power Rebellion. It's Bjorn. That's about all I got. All the beatboxing I got, but, you know, we're celebrating for something. We're celebrating good StarCraft. That's what we're celebrating. That that style from Classic was so abusive. And I mean that in the best way possible. You love to see it. You really do, as Beyond says, ah, well, you know what? What if I just be annoying? I take a page out of Maru's book and Clem's book is really the only two Terrans that consistently do this. I'm going to go eBay block. You know, three probes are pulled, so... TV is not going to last for forever, but it does delay the natural just a little bit. And that's not exactly what you want here as class. You want to get your economic engine as ready as it can be, as quick as you can. Naomi is the goddess. I, you say Dota's the best, and I agree. Well, second best. StarCraft, clearly the best. They're, uh, the World Team League. 
put on a show match between Scarlet and Lambo, a laser, Kelezer, sort of in Clem versus Max Ed and Time and Coffee and F91 and Shasta. So a West versus East Dota show match. Hey, NASA Orangutan, thank you so much for the follow. But um, anyway, so they put it, they did a Dota show match. It was really interesting because you had Clem who was literally, they were, the Chinese community was making memes about how their, their game plan was killing him uh, to feed coffee <laughs> to win the game. But anyway, uh, I cast the entire thing. It was a best of three. It's on my YouTube channel if you're curious. About two and a half hours of interesting Dota action. But honestly, the end of it, the way game three ended was pretty freaking hype. I mean, I'm not going to say I'm the best Dota caster. I've cast it. Now I can say once I've cast a single best of three in Dota because I did it for that show match. But I'm not going to say I'm the best. And in general, folks, I upload a lot of stuff to YouTube. It's slowed down as of late. And if you're watching this on YouTube, well, you know I put stuff on YouTube. Slowed down a little bit because King of Battles really put me behind the content curve. And then I had a bunch of recordings that I lost all the audio to. Which was unfortunate. So there, there was that. But in general, I try to upload VODs every day. In 4K, no less. Because we are that fancy. Take advantage of... YouTube's fantastic transcoding. Classic though, this game, he is opening Phoenix play. Uh, he does have an Oracle, but he's not really opted to do much of anything with it just yet. And beyond for his part, his natural's going down right now. Of course, natural in the high ground because eBay blocked, which slows the natural down by some number of minerals, which then means that uh, you're more vulnerable to adept harass and things like that. So you build it on the high ground, it's fine. You say, I've done more damage to you than you have to me. Big, big question though. Is how much damage does this win on my drop? Is Classic paying attention? Drop one, two, three. Classic is not paying attention. This is going to be rather slow. Tracers at the end are not going to do enough. Only three workers go down. Revelation on the fourth Widow Mine, so it's not even going to get damage here. It looked like Classic was not responding quick enough, but he got there in time. And I mean, you got one probe per Widow Mine. Oh, we got six. I guess he got more. I thought it was one per. So they'll take that. He will absolutely take that one. Is he going to try to rotate over once again? It's not revelated. we got to wait, of course, for the Widow Mines to come off cooldown. But the Phoenix are rotating on over, too. They know what Beyond is up to. He's got the sole read on Beyond's positioning. And so the Medivac has to run on home. Oh, Beyond, if he was a sneaky boy, he would drop these Widow Mines and just sit over them. So there we go. We're going to see. Yep, that is the defense. But Oracle says, no, no, no. Not allowed. That is no bueno. So we're going to see, uh, yeah, these Widowmines, they fall. I mean, beyond God value, we got six workers. In fact, he's equal on worker. He's equal on workers with classic. So uh, everything I said about, oh, it's not working out for beyond all that well. Let me amend that statement. Beyond's pretty happy. All right, so beyond... Well, it's the same build he went for last time. Plus one stem combat shields. That 730 move out is really going to be the uh, the piece de resistance thing he's looking for. But this time, he's not going to be ambushed by insane force fields. I mean, I, I don't know that enough has been made of how good those force fields were on game one. I mean, seriously, they, that killed Beyond right there. He maybe had a shot afterwards to retreat back and uh, build an army up again and do something. But that force fields just killed him. Straight up. Really fantastic force fields. Curious Minds is not a map like that, that has those high ground positions that you can defend so easily for the third base. And also, Beyond's not incurably far behind by the oh, by the opening. In fact, he's in a fairly decent spot. So Hellion dives in. Of course, it's going to take three shots. It's not going to get much of anything. But these Hellions were leftovers from the early game. They didn't find much value. They say, ah, we might as well try something. But, you know, whatever. It's a scout. It's a scout. So what I actually think is rather interesting is Classic has gotten Phoenix Colossus this game. And that's not particularly interesting in and of itself, as we do see the army up beyond running across the map. His, uh, all of his upgrades are going to sync up pretty nicely. And he's going to get a free Observer. Always, always value. Uh, 
But I want to point this out because Plastic has been one of those players that really does enjoy Phoenix Charge Lock into Storm. In fact, that was kind of all he was playing when he came back from the military. He kind of, he almost single-handedly brought it back into the meta. Which is fun. But now be looking to get aggressive here. This army is not big enough. <laughs> Run, flee, free for your lives. Because, uh, yeah. Beyond is not going to find the valley, but he's got to drop on the main base. He's managed to force the entire army and all the Phoenix to the front of the map. And that means that he's going to kill off a couple workers. Maybe get a gas. That's nice. I mean, this drop is dead. So Beyond didn't commit too hard to it, but he found something. Please target workers. Yeah, okay. He's going to target workers as they go back. That's a little bit of a little bit preemptive there. Classic going to lose a lot more than that. Just targeting everything down. Now, Beyond cannot find the third because there is a lot of stuff here. Oh, maybe disable on the cloud. You know what? Actually, with the disable on the Colossus, we're going to have to see the shield battery get targeted down. Too sweet. It's going to go down here as well. And now we're going to see Immortals fall. Phoenix trying to lift up what they can. Colossus, eventually the disable will be done. So Beyond's going to be forced back here. The lifts on the Phoenix. Pretty damn good. And the Marauders fall as well. But an Immortal went down. He got a bunch of workers. Worker count is equalized. Beyond now has this third base. But Colossus getting into the next level of tech. Again, this is something This is something the Alpha X Protoss, for whatever reason, in particular, have been doing. And I talk to Astraea sometimes and say, hey, look, do you practice as a classic at all? Like, do you talk? And the answer is generally no. I mean, time zones and everything else. But Astraea and Classic, right around a similar time, both really started moving into this heavy Sky Toss focus, getting plus one air quickly, moving into effectively 3 4 base carrier. But the Terran's not able to break them. And it looks strong if the Terran's not ready for the transition. It's not really going into Phoenix heavily already. Uh, now, Force Field's going to be nice, but not as good as it would otherwise be. Armor Shredder Missile means it's really hard for Classic to take this fight, even if Bion does not have a good Viking focus. But Bion is one of those players that doesn't like to go Vikings pretty heavily anyways. That's just not him. That, he likes to stay around focus more. He goes Ghosts. He goes Splits. He goes Multitasking. And uh, EMP going to miss everything, or he's going to get everything but that one Phoenix. So two ghosts go down. That is unfortunate. Ghosts are expensive. But again, I mean, Beyond is one of these players that really does like to go heavy medevac, heavy ghost, heavy bio on the ground. And that is the style that is... I mean, look, we're on four Colossus. <laughs> Wait, not going to be scary. It's going to be Tempest this time. Beyond needs Vikings to fight this. It, it, you, you do not win this game without Vikings for Beyond. There's a movie that has that Run Boy Run song as a uh, in a in a big in a in a big action scene. Like I have the song in my head. No, there's a movie attached to it, but I can't remember what the movie or the show is. That is really helpful, by the way, <laughs> in terms of uh, Run Boy Run. But okay, plus two is already on the way here. Beyond is gonna get enhanced shockwaves eventually, and now he's building Vikings, but he has two. He needs to he needs to get to twelve for the Colossus, and that's even that's not even paying attention to the Tempest and the Phoenix. He needs to go up to like 20 Vikings to be able to contest this and maybe even plus one. But in typical Beyond fashion, he's all inning on the ground. He he doesn't have an armory until, I mean, he's getting it now. Uh, he doesn't, again, he doesn't really have an armory. He just wants to crush through his opponent, get some really good surrounds. But Classic is playing too defensively for that. I, I don't really see a world where that happens. I mean, I guess the saving grace is uh, Classic also skipped a lot to get here. In terms of he didn't really have forges it's not like his ground upgrades are insane in fact he doesn't have any the classic can take the bottom left side it's funny technically this is a sensical expand pattern right it is the next base to the left from the fourth but it really does feel like a ninja base and it will act like a ninja base no one is beyond is not going to expect classic to take the bottom left before the top right And folks, if there's one thing we know about Beyond, if he's not able to get his damage, if he's not able to tell his truth in the mid game, he will struggle in the late game. I mean, we've seen this happen before. It, luckily, Beyond has four bases. So this is not a situation where he's locked into like three bases on Glittering Ashes, where Classic takes literally the entire map and proxies Nexi. Uh, Nexi. <laughs> so he can go 
and get better shield batteries because that that has happened. It's on. It's uh further back on the YouTube if you're curious. I, I cast it with Fear Dragon. It was a lot of fun. But I mean, look, we're on we're on 23 Marauders, but only six Vikings. There's not a lot of there's not a lot more room supply and be unsupplied to do anything else. He has to find a way to trade these Marauders in a cost-effective manner. And I mean, it's going to be hard. <laughs> it's going to be really hard for Bjorn. Instead, yeah, he's not even doing that. He's just killing him. He says, I understand what this game state is. I need to buy room for more Vikings. I need to get plus one air. It's halfway down. I need to get my upgrades. 2-2 two -two is only halfway done. I, he's just going to have to turtle out a long, long time. Maybe Diversion. I saw that once when I was in like junior year of high school. And I wasn't a fan. It, it read, it, it washed very much like, hey, well, they thought we got a big fight. Picking off here, big armor shredder missile on top of all the carriers, but not the interceptors. And that's really the big deal. Uh, Klaus is trying to hit here before we have the stacked events popping on up. Disturb a shot, not going to get much of anything. But it feels like Pion, at the very least, he's kind of established this base. And uh, something to point out, again, he seems to be doing this in at least TVT, TVP. This is an orbital as his fourth. So he is quad muley. He is quad scanning. See, I, I don't think it's divergent. Um, I was I remember I saw it uh, when I was at a summer program in, a, in high school, and it just felt like Brave New World with a bad guy. Like it was, uh, I was underwhelmed. Partially because I'm really not a fan of Brave New World. Like it's interesting philosophically, but Aldous Huxley is a weird dude. Anyway, uh, Vike is moving forward, just looking for snipes that they can find. And look at this. Classic is starting to get his stat defense set on up here. But what do we have? What do we have? Beyond stepping forward, he tries to, He really just has to kite this back, kill off as many interceptors as he can. There are 38 that remain. Beyond his 2-2 is now done. EMPs can make this a little bit easier. Marauders, they step forward. They're going to get one disruptor, maybe. And they're actually they're going to get the second one here as well. Beyond in dead airspace actually taking a pretty good fight to start here. But he has to be very careful. EMPs blanket the army, actually really blanket the interceptors. That's the big deal. But part of Beyond's army is in a very low medevac. Beyond, you got to unload that one. Especially as there's a ghost in there. Especially as there's a ghost in there. All right, so now, now we have a fleet, uh, fusion core on the way. Now we have plus two air attack, more and more ghosts, more and more Vikings. And is he gonna find this? He does not know this base is here, but he's gonna find it regardless. Gotta be careful of the cannons though. Oh no, they're so low Two Medivacs go down. And instead of a push that probably could have killed this base, even before the, even with the recall, it's a push that just kills two cannons and runs away. Oh no, beyond low Medivacs, be your, be your enemy. That does not feel good, but at least it tells Bjorn that he can take the bottom left and he can push through it as well. And we also got to remember, that was only a partial recall. Uh, Bjorn, as he rotates, rotates his entire army around here, he will be able to get these two carriers. He will be able to knock this base down. That's going to be very nice. EMP, uh, well, yeah, on the shield batteries, that shield battery inventory is going to go down pretty quickly, but Bjorn's got to be careful because the army rotates over and he does not have any static defense on this side. Scans out the army. Oh, he's going to get a couple Phoenix. That's always rather nice. Uh, EMPs looking for it, looking for a storm. Carriers are going to go down. That's nice, but there we go. Beyond on top of it. it almost like... <laughs> That's funny. He EMPs the High Templar, but it's been around for so long that it still has pretty much a storm regardless. But now he owns the Zalnaga. From this position, he can start to shell away at these carriers. Uh, or excuse me, these Tempests. He's going to knock them down. Storm on... That is a huge storm on the Vikings. That really changes the calculus of this fight. Colossus is starting to fall. Bjorn rotates over. He kills this fifth base of Classic eventually. And as he kites backwards with the Vikings, trying to make something happen. Actually, there are only two Colossus here. How many storms do we have? Bjorn, he needs to hit the EMP. And he only gets half of it. This army is very, very low. But the base does go down. Classic back down to five bases. But Bjorn is going to be able to take his fifth base pretty soon. Taking down a lot of stuff. That was like three or four Phoenix. A couple of Tempest. A couple of Carriers. Some I Templars. A base. A bunch of workers. Bion's pretty solidly in his late game tech now. I was worried for a while, but Classic wasn't able to quite find the advantage that he was looking for. And the question now is, does Classic go back to, to, to Colossus? Uh, cheese sandwich, yes. Interceptors cost minerals. At different points in the game, 
they have cost more and they've cost less. That is one of the primary ways that Blizzard has traditionally balanced the carrier. Yeah, classic late game PVT is really something else. I'm really sad that he got knocked out so early in the GSL because he has done some really cool stuff here. Is uh, we have adept drops. <laughs> We have an adept drop into this uh, planetary, but really the important thing is DT's into the natural. Bion's army is not here, but he's going to be able to rotate over pretty quickly. He's, this shouldn't get too much done. Uh, Marauder dies, but I mean, that's fine. And this more prison will die here as well. But what Classic's doing more than anything, he's using this as an opportunity to rotate over to try to knock a base down. But Bion already is here with his air fleet, so we're going to see the Tempest go down. Storm, though, Bion, you got to be careful. The storm, the storm's beyond so many Vikings go down in the blink of an eye and now the stacked defense doesn't matter because there's really nothing to defend it it is dying beyond will lose this base well the bio arrives in peace blanket everything maybe he's not gonna lose the base but it's, it's not easy to hold anymore he lost the d defensive emplacement that he has set up for himself this sharp's going forward really not getting all that much those vikings 27 vikings have died this game but i mean I feel like 15 to, I, I would love Observer Plus is not in this. would love to see how many Vikings died in that last fight because just so many. Hello there, Hazel x -Minix. Thank you so much for the follow. Uh, Nuke going down on a base that actually <laughs> doesn't have any workers. It's gonna knock the static defense out, I guess, and that, that's something. As Vikings in the high ground, another carrier will fall. Beyond looking to stim in. Oh, there we go. He does get the disruption. He doesn't do the Beyond thing. Overstays. Welcome. Colossus are starting to fall here. Carriers falling as well. But the question again, Interceptor count. It's down to three. It's down to two. Marauders on the ground. They don't really matter. But Beyond's army is on top of the Sky Toss here. It's going to have to be a recall. Recalls don't matter. They're all going to go down. Two carriers survive. Beyond, he avoids the disruptor. And that buys him all the room in the world. This space on the upper right hand side, it has been broken. It is dead it's in the ground it's more broken than my mental state after that last fight is all the all the probes they're dead the base is dead we are now looking at one tempest four carriers on the map beyond taking such an incredibly cost-effective trade classics only option he has to go and just find value on the other side he has to force run by us he has to force his way to force beyond home and the nuke going down again knocking down the static defense probes not really gonna see much happen and the Zealot run by is actually really nice. It, it's going to kill off a lot of these missile turrets and force the entire army of Beyond back. Do we have another nuke? Oh, it's in production. We do not have a nuke. <coughs> so I was like, man, you nuked that army. But uh, Ghost will go down. Okay. Zealot run by has been dealt with, but the static defense of Beyond is not really there. That being said, <coughs> excuse me. That being said, he's got a big bank. He can rebuild his missile turrets. We can rebuild. We have the technology. Jean de Plume. Thank you so much for the follow. Welcome, welcome. And actually, I really like this from Beyond. Notice he's getting high psych auto tracking. He's getting building armor. And one might say, well, you know, it's just because it's light game TVP. Hey, he's way to M. Thanks so much for the follow. Uh, because it's getting late game and you get it. But in this game in particular, keeping these missile turrets alive and getting maximum damage from them when it is such a carrier and a carrier heavy army for the most part you do want to make sure that you're able to keep those alive so getting additional armor giving them additional range giving them more effectiveness in general is absolutely worthwhile hey rich the dj medley thanks so much for the follow as well now beyond running forward here uh emp is doing validate a lot of this data defense nuke on the bottom side beyond actually there's no there are a couple of templars that's just about it the vikings on the bottom side they're gonna get a couple tempest that's really nice uh but we got a fight kicking off here in the middle there are seven storms or something in this position Beyond has to hit the emps the shot shot's gonna look to put Beyond in a corner but he's not gonna get them and now we're gonna start some planetaries fall oh man big storms here but the problem is really the vikings are out here storms of the vikings on the bottom side but now i think the storms have been mostly expended so many vikings are falling though and beyond he took a good fight earlier i don't know that he can do this again there are 29 interceptors on the field uh, this is looking a lot harder beyond needs the reinforcements he needs some way to make this happen and even as he's finding some free tempest and things like that he has to get a big flank he's got to find some value because there's still storms on the field this is a hard fight for him to take in earnest so it looks like he says yeah i'm just gonna run by i'm gonna lose this base that's fine i have more bases where that came from and if i can kill off a base of yours hit a big flank i uh, hit some big viking shots maybe it's gonna be worthwhile but his bank has been spent so too has classics to be fair 
than both players really in the Stone Age in terms of economy. Oh, Big Gun's going to get a couple disruptors. That's going to be nice. One goes down, two goes down, three goes down, but the Storm Flank of the army is going to force Beyond back. That is so much damage. Plus three carriers. They rip through things, but now the Vikings are free firing. We're looking at 22 interceptors. EMP is on the army. Is this it? Does Beyond break through right now? If he doesn't, he's dead. And it looks like he will be able to do so. No interceptors left anymore, but the bio is so damn low. I don't know that it can fight the cannons anymore. Don't know that it fight the Archons. He's going to force their kite back, go back. And the Tempest, the saving grace of Classic. And somehow this game goes on. I thought it was one way or the other. This game ends. But that is not the case. Hey, DHMKJPP. Thank you so much for... Yeah. I like to think I have a good caster voice. Jimmy Needles. Dr. Dotson. Ramon Shatter. Oh, no, Beyond absolutely is good enough to win a GSL. Rogue just won the GSL, and Beyond should have killed Rogue in the round of... Round of 10. Beyond should have gotten out of that round of 10. And then it's a totally different story. Where are we at now? We got Bill or Mech Armor on the way. Beyond still has the base in the upper right, bottom left, but he's really starting to mine out of those bases, I think. So carriers have to be very... Or Phoenix or Vikings have to be very careful here. Interceptors run in, but Vikings do fall. This base is going to get given up now. Beyond understands he cannot really hold it anymore. Uh, but this is a problem because he will lose all of these SCVs. Going down to 38. His army supply is not really inspiring. His bank is mostly dead as he takes the bottom side, though. <laughs> and there's still an assimilator there. Or trading bases. Trading spaces. Terran versus Protoss. Beyond just says, uh, yeah, you know, this, uh, this, this space punk theme that you got for yourself, I I'm not a big fan. I, I don't really like it. We need to go with some more uh, mid-century modern Terran. Absolutely, that's how that works. He's going to build you an entirely new bedroom. By dropping a planetary on its head. But, you know, planetaries are nice. We like planetaries. So, folks, I'm seeing a lot of people here that were not here earlier. I'm assuming that Cure vs. Zest is complete, so... Spoil it for me. Who is the winner of this series going to run into in the finals? Hello, ex-girlfriend. Dump me for a greater spire. Uh, I got to run back there, Bion. Yeah, this is a little bit scary. Uh, Bion has a tendency to just really, <laughs> really mess up against disruptors, but he's going to take a positive fight here against the Zealots right now. We all know the Zealots don't matter. Th their job is to kill off as much bio as possible, but really it is the Sky Toss at the end of the day that makes or breaks this fight. Vikings trying to keep backwards as they can. A carrier does fall. Uh, Bion again on an army supply lead. But uh, please, again, drop from the medevac. Those are important ghosts. Yeah, this is a truly insane game. All right, Bio stims in. Disruption. Oh, God, be careful there, Beyond. Oh, no, that is a big shot. Suddenly, Beyond, instead of being up, army supply, he's down, and I don't know that he can fight the Sky Toss anymore. I don't know that he can, he can fight the Stogger, sure, but Blink Stogger Disruptor with this many carries, I think... Birthday boy Bjorn may be out of this game now. I mean, he's got time. He's mining a lot more than his opponent. Mules are a powerful thing, but he's going to lose this base on the bottom side pretty soon, I think. And uh, I don't know that he can build enough soon enough to contest this army. He's only on four Vikings. And there are storms here now. There are two layers of splash. Archons just to tank up. And I don't... If Bjorn gets on top of these carriers, sure, he kills them. Maybe. Uh, but I'm not even sure that he can do that. And there we go. This planetary is dead. Nothing you can do about it. Ideally, Beyond gets the SCVs out, but I'm not even sure he can do that one. Uh, maybe he's going to try to cut this army on the retreat, cut it piecemeal, but uh, Beyond now down to 20 SCVs, 19 SCVs. He's got to find this army piecemeal in some way, shape, or form. But Classic is doing such a good job of, well, just keeping it together. So uh, Beyond is like no minerals. 400, 700 minerals in this base. Not much more, actually less. In this base, like 400, he it really, there's nowhere for him to mind. He has to take another base. He, his core bases are dead. And, oh, man, classic. He already recalls north. He understands what Beyond wanted to do, but Beyond had to do that earlier. He was just sitting there outside of his base, his fourth base that's not really mining. And it doesn't really, if he'd gone rotated and maybe knocked out his opponent's economy at the same time. If he'd killed the upper right, if he had maybe been able to stim in and get this base as well, uh, maybe it's fine. I mean, I, I worry that the army complexity is st still too high. 
but maybe. Ooh, EMPs, though. Uh, Tempest does not go down, but he doesn't lose the Viking. That's the most important thing. And what are we at? Again, Viking count. 13 Vikings to 5 carriers. Oh, Cure 1, an insane comeback. Got it. Okay, so we have some orbitals that we can lift over to another base. Bottom left really is the prize. Bjorn has to be able to mine from that one again. But for now, I, I guess he says, I just need to be able to rotate over to Starbuck Shots to run forward. Uh, third one, Bjorn gives him in right here right now. He says, this is my time my opportunity. And there we go. All the disruptors are dead, or at least all but one are dead. This makes it so much easier to fight this army now. I don't know how many MPs we have, though, for the High Templar floating, rotating from the north side. But at least the splash is done for the most part. High Templar running forward, though. Bjorn, is he paying attention? He doesn't see it. Oh, he does? No, he does. Uh, Zelnaga, you just got to kill this Beyond. Snipe it down. Okay, stems a little bit of my authority. That, that's going to be fine. Storms are dropped. Actually, two storms are dropped. You'll take that one. That means there's only one storm in that High Templar. And there are not a lot of High Templars in this game right now, actually. So the, the, the Phoenix, not the Phoenix, I'm sorry. The Vikings can be a little bit more aggressive here. They're going to run forward. Not a lot of anti-air, actually, unless outside of the air itself. So the Vikings, they're going to do what they can. Now the Archons, they run forward. And this is actually going to be a pretty good fight here. Carriers start to fall. Uh, Vikings could get another one, but it's very, very low. It's going to get a Tempest here. Bjorn starting to try to make some magic happen. Find a victory from defeat because he's. this is a hard, this is a heavy lift to do indeed. All right, so Biostims forward. More disruptors go down. Beyond has it. Okay. Ooh, be very careful there. Storms go off on the bio, but actually goes off on the Zealots as well. Beyond hiding backwards, but he just can't build Vikings anymore. His mineral bank is just too damn low, and we're looking at third. It's actually only 13 interceptors. SCV's being pulled to keep him alive. Beyond, this is maybe his fight. If he knocks it all down, is it going to be enough? The one carrier is all that remains of the Sky Toss army, and Beyond, he takes the Fight. My goodness, he takes the fight. It's 46 armies to blind of 14. No one's really mining anymore. Storm doing what it can. But beyond, beyond, he's not mining, but he's knocked down all the complexity of this army. I don't know how he did that. I don't know how he did that. But beyond, he's not mining. He's long distance all over the place. But he knocked down all the complexity. And now he can kill the base. Now he can do things at this game. I have mer I have chills. I did not believe the repair on the SCVs with the last dregs of Byun's economy. That worked. That freaking worked. Now, of course, DT on the bottom side is going to deny mining here. But uh, Bion, yeah, is going to be able to rotate over to defend that one. And uh, have 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 mules will travel is really the story here. Bion unlocking this base. We're going to see his mineral income really start to spike here for a second. There we go. DT uh, it doesn't really. Yeah, it's going to. Oh, it's going to blink out of a scan. That's annoying. But it will go down. I want, I think Bion should have killed the base. I understand you want to reestablish a base of your own. Uh, but Classics Army Supply has re-equalized. Uh, the value is is not as bad. In fact, they're going to find this base, but there's really no mining from it. Beyond can just kind of lift it up and go home. But, I man, if you kill Classic's last mining base, you kill that Tempest, I mean, that, that, I think, would be the play, because, again, there's no mining right here. Oh, man, I love looking at chat two minutes ago, like, right before the big fight happens. And it's like, Classic can't lose this. It's, uh, it's Ray Rain saying, Classic absolutely can lose this. Um... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I I don't understand how that happened, but I, I will take it. Absolutely. What a fight. What a fight from Beyond. Now, of course, the game's still going on, and we're going to see more bases get lifted up, sent back home again. It doesn't matter. As long as they're down, they can drop mules. Beyond is just desperately defending this bottom side. How many ghosts do we have? We're at nine ghosts. That's the big deal. One Tempest, four dis or two Disruptors, four High Templar, and just a metric ton of Zealots. <laughs> oh, I love it. Two minutes behind, we see chat finally react to that one. <laughs> As probes have been pulled to deal with the missile turret, of course, folks, that is the standard late game meta on Curious Minds, but I think this is probably the best game I've ever seen on Curious Minds. My goodness. So begin now rotating forward. Uh, this is not a position that Classic really cares about. There's no mining on it anymore. 
Uh, the probes are part of this army. There is no, there is very little mining. Classic has 54 workers, but really it's only the 18 of them, the 20 of them mining depper, right? That matter at all. So he sent some on the other side. He has some probes with this army. Zealous looking for a run by, but again, Biel doesn't care about this spot. He only cares about the bottom left and his army. In fact, the crazy thing, we're not going to see him do it, but the crazy thing, crazy next level play would be to just go and actually pull all of his production on the bottom side. So that's also going to show up though. Actually, Bjorn, he's going to take that sacrifice. That is a lot of zealous that he can kill pretty easily with all the ghosts in his army. Uh, Disruptor is not going to find much value. And that is about 20 supply. That classic has here is actually going to be forced to recall, but still zealous will die. Uh, what is dead may never die, but instead it will die here. Beyond moving forward, Disruptor shot going out. Beyond doesn't have the entirety of his army. EMPs on these Disruptors. It's going to be a lot easier to kill them now. Beyond stims in, gets a Disruptor, and now the probes have been pulled. This is the fight. Classic has to make something happen here. EMPs on the army. Are we going to have the storms that we need? The Vikings, they're just providing so much goddamn vision. They're making it so these side Templar cannot join the fight. Disruptors are falling. Archons are falling. Beyond, he's done it. In 33 minutes, the fight on the top side turned the game around. And and I don't see a world where Classic is able to do this anymore. Maybe Storms, maybe Disruptors. They're always possible. They always can make miracles happen. But folks, I think we've already seen our quota of miracles in this game. This is it, folks. Storms are good. If the intercept... If the, oh! <laughs> oh, the Medivac 40 and beat so many of the High Templar. There's still Storms available. We gotta be careful. But Bjorn is just styling here right now. He's feeling as though it's his birthday. He will not be denied. There is one storm remains. It does not hit good enough. Bjorn here. He's running on it. There's nothing left. Oh, that's actually one last storm. It's going to be fantastic. I Maybe I spoke too soon. But the Archons fall. The army falls. Everything is dead. There's nothing left. Classic. He has fought his damnedest. Fought his hardest in this game. But in 34 minutes, there is nothing left for the Chintas. Just a couple zealots. A couple probes. <clears throat> a couple probes on the harass. And I think Classic doesn't really understand how much Beyond has. <laughs> I don't think Classic understands how much Beyond has because hey, he's not coming back into this game. <laughs> oh man, what a game. What a game. Hey, Neferio Gaming. Uh, Neferio Gaming, thanks so much for the sub. Dave Tessa, thank you so much for the gift sub. Now that I have a second to talk about this. Zealots are going to try to make the end, like the final stand here for Classic. But I mean, Zealots, there are ghosts in this army. <laughs> the Zealots are not what you need, not with the upgrade lead. Classic, he's doing one last try. He understands that he should have won this game. Maybe Storms. Maybe Storm's going to be enough. The bio is low, but Bion now stimming into the last mining base. The probes are going to get pulled. Oh, that's a big storm, though. That evaporated so much of that army. Uh, but uh, I don't know. That's going to be a stock relief. Oh, wait a minute. Stalker blinks forward. That's a lot of stuff there. And last storm goes down. Archons are doing what they can. This game is scrappy as hell. But there we go. There we there we go. Bion. Holy crap. Bion is just inhuman. <laughs> In the bottom left, tied up. What a game. He just gave us for Alpha X. He's classic. In the upper right, in the blue, in the gold. I don't even know how he came back in that game, uh, but he's a genius. He's brilliant. He's beyond. Folks. I don't know. It's 1.30 in the morning, and that normally happens. I don't know how I sleep after that game. Like, that's sometimes the problem casting EPT Korea. It goes late. It kind of gets to that point where you hit your second win, and you're like, oh, crap, I'm never sleeping again. Uh, but also the problem is, is the fact that when you get games like that, uh, yeah, well, some people are saying Classic will never mentally recover. He's just going for uh, the edited the adapted classic build, the uh, Max Packs 2.0, where you build your first gateway at home, you get a cyber core, and then you build a gateway on the map, you put a lot of pressure, and just really make it impossible for Bion to be happy. Classic has killed a lot of Terrans this way. He's reverse swept Dream in the uh, Alpha X pre catavates the party. When he uh, made the finals, at least. I forget if he won the thing or not. Talking about his wrist must be hurting right now. I mean, kind of, but we have to remember. Beyond, for whatever reason, he, he kills it online. It's just the GSL studio that makes his wrist die. We got a 
this pylon on the map, though, and the probe's trapped the main base. <laughs> Where did the probe go? Did, the pro oh, did he recall the probe? He recalled the probe? Okay, so there's this pylon on the map. But he's not doing anything with it. Probe's going there now, but uh, Pyun's going to scout. Oh, yep. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. No. That's not what you want. That truly is not what you want. So Beyond is going to get a full scout off. And more importantly, uh, this is a depth popping out first. So, yeah, Beyond's just not going to do much of anything there. Did the game, did the volume just get quiet or just me? Maybe it's just the music turning off. I don't know. That sounded weird. It felt like just the, the, the StarCraft audio ducked for a second. Man, there's nothing I derive pleasure from more, by the way, than watching chat react to just insanity two minutes beyond. I mean, I'd rather see you reacting as it happens because that's even more fun. But, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it lets me appreciate it even more unless the game happens like that where it's one of those things where the game is insane and it is insane, but it just, you have the big moment, the moment that turns the game around and then it just doesn't stop. And I can't take, I can't take a moment to enjoy people freaking out. But this Reaper's trapped now. The Reaper, uh, he has no path home. He's trying to do the thing. So uh, you can actually Reaper grenade yourself over the small point, over the tiny little bit of the hitbox right there. I mean, that, that fight that Beyond lost six disrupt or that Beyond killed six disruptors. Beyond is the only Terran player that goes for that. Nine times out of... Because Beyond is also the Terran player that does that, and he loses his entire army because he misjudges it. He plays at the edge of things. And it either works or it doesn't. And in that game, it absolutely worked out. But it's also something that Beyond had to do. Because if he just takes the fight at the edge of things, keeps trading back and forth a little bit, that was a fight that Classic was always going to win. So he had to just all in. He had to do some plays that wouldn't normally happen. Hey, Dave Tessa. Thank you so much for the gifted sub to Gozu Azura. Thank you so much. But okay, Bio Stims on in here. And uh, ooh, that's a tank as well. So it's actually going to kill these stalkers pretty well, even without uh, even without some sort of siege. So uh, Classic's in a little bit of trouble right now. The tank is not going down. Cyclone's going to get a lock on on the high ground. Another stalker falls. Beyond going to look for a sieged up position. Uh, I, I think he cancels this third base. Does he have more, more tech on the way? It looks like it's just Bio, but he should be able to cancel this third base. Classic's pulling his probes. He understands that this is a bit of a problem. <laughs> he says, I don't want that to happen, but uh, Beyond's going to be happy. He says, yeah, sure, I'll kill your probes. That's fine. Um, actually, my tank is going to stay alive anyways. Classic force a blink back. Third base should get canceled now. You pull the probes once. It doesn't work. I, I think that's probably it. Stock's going to run forward. They're going to get the tank. That's very nice, but uh, they're going to trade their lives in exchange. Classic, I'm not going to say he's tilted off the base of the earth, but this is just not the play we're looking for from him. His pressure didn't work. Pulling those probes seems a bit dodgy, and now he's down 11 workers. Beyond's happy to let third base survive. It's, he did damage to it, so it's easier to kill later. He's up 10 workers. His 3-1-1 is happening soon enough. Yeah, I'd buy the shell shock. I mean, it's just... <laughs> that game, too... After games like that, you almost never see insane games. It just normally is, hey, I'm uh, I'm going to do the funny thing, and I, we're going to cheese because I don't want to play another 30-minute game like that. And it takes so much mental, like, physical effort, absolutely. I mean, you play, you play long games like that, and your forearms just, they can hurt. I mean, these players play tons of games a day, so maybe not. Maybe that's just me because I don't play StarCraft enough. But you play enough StarCraft, like you're, you're the muscles in your wrists, in your forearms start to hurt. Maybe Beyond's wrists are sad. Um, and there's just so much mental strength as well. And Dave Tessa, thanks for the 250 bits. I appreciate it. I will use it to buy lemon tea and honey. To put a bomb on my voice after Beyond just made me lose it after that last game. But it's dropping the main base now because Classic is not really prepared for this. He's got some stuff in the natural. He's going to catch an immortal, maybe. There's no stat defense here to keep the immortal alive. So... Dead immortal, not really immortal all that much. In fact, I think Gun just takes his fight, but no, he backs up. He says, nah, nah, mm -mm -mm. 
I'd rather kill workers. Pick up, go home. That's just it. Yeah, Pyun, broken classic, mentally, physically, emotionally. He will not be denied his birthday right. He's on to the finals.